Good day. Welcome to EDMS. The engineering drawing is made clear, structured, and easy to master. We're going to continue with our exam guide, paper two, and this is then part two of a two part series. So if you haven't watched the first part, I will link it up here so that you can watch that video. So let's continue. Now let's look at an example of an isometrical drawing of November 2024 last year. And this is what was given. If we look at the page, you're going to get the isometrical information regarding the question over here. You're going to get the orthographic views just below that. And then you'll get the assessment criteria down here. We know that this paper is done in third orthographic projection. So this will be your top view. This will be a front and this will be a right view. How do we know this? Because top is at the top, right is at the right in third orthographic projection. You will most likely get a starting position and then you can go find that starting position on the views. So you can see here on the top view, you have to P there. On the front view, you have to P there. And on the right view, you have to P there. By looking at the starting position P with the front view, you can only draw out to the left. So that view, front view, is going to be here. When you look at the starting position of the P on the right view, you can only draw out to the right, which is there, and that will be then the right view. So this view will be implemented here, and this view will be implemented over here. When we do isometrical drawings, we use a 30 degree triangle for all our horizontal lines. So all the lines that runs horizontally we now construct them at 30 degrees the vertical lines however stays vertical so this you should know an asymmetrical drawing we draw at 30 degrees the drawings are usually on a scale of one to one but you must read to be certain that it is one to one it's not to say that it is going to be one to one in your paper two but they read through the question and the given to make sure that you adhere to everything and always refer back to the marking criteria to see where the marks are allocated and what counts what. Just have a look out. Sometimes they give a cutting line on the top view to indicate that the part of the isometrical drawing needs to be cut it out. So you're going to have a part of the isometrical drawing which will be sectioned. They will also specify it here in the given and instructions in the question and you will see it with a cutting line on the top view. You will then apply hatching on that cutted planes or surfaces where the cutting line goes through and this you can do at 75 degrees okay so 30 plus 45 degrees because this is drawn at 30 degrees with a 45 degree hatching it is at 75 degrees then you need to know how to draw and how to construct a circle in isometric i can guarantee you this you are going to get a drawing with a circle in remember when you do a circle you will need to do the full block and the construction to be able to construct the circle in isometric. Never erase your construction lines. If you do get marks for the construction, so never erase that. If you want to know how big the block is, it is basically just the diameter of the circle. So if we look here, this circle has a radius of 40. So the diameter will be 80. So the block that you will draw at 30 degrees and 30 degrees is going to be 80 by 80. Then you will do the construction, which is the longest line that you possibly can draw from the one corner to that corner. The same here, from that corner to that corner, and from here to that corner to that corner. This will be implemented on a top view. This will be implemented on this view, which is now the front view, and this will be implemented on the right view. But we can see here, that the circle is on the right view visible where we will see the arc so we will use this blocks information or this construction and then we go from that corner to the center line and that corner to the center line there where they meet that is your point where you'll put your compass and then you will construct the arc put your lead on that point there and then you will construct the arc from that center point to that center point, you'll do the same here. From that center point to that center point. When you want to do the 
big arc, you will put the point of your compass over here, put the lead to that center point there, and you just close it, and you do the same for the one here at the bottom. Okay, this is very basic. You've done this since grade 10, so this should be easy to do. Then, how do we apply a thickness to a circle in isometric? There's a quick way that you can implement. All that you do is you take these contact points, that point, and this point, and this point, you project them 30 degrees inwards to the thickness that you should apply. In this instance, if we look here at that arc part there, you can see that it has a thickness of 20. So I'll project that point 20 millimeters inwards at 30 degrees. That will be your new point for the arc at the back. And this will be your new point for the arc at the back. And this will be your new point for the arc at the back. You don't need to go and do the whole block again. Okay, this is a faster way. So all that you do is you project these points inwards at 30 degrees to the specific thickness of the arc or circle part. You will need to close it up with a 30 degree line on the edges over there and over there to make it a clean circle in isometric. Remember that we do not show any hidden detail in isometric. So there should nowhere be dotted lines in your drawing. However, there should be center lines where a center line is applicable like with a circle so remember center lines do count marks if you see here circle construction and center lines okay so make sure that you do your center lines because they do count marks when it comes to any non-isometrical lines we refer to them as non-isometrical lines we will use it in our geometrical shapes but let's say they give you a a line which is at a certain degree you will need to do an auxiliary view first to determine the specific either going to be a height or width of a part in isometrical drawing. So you'll then construct it in a 2D form, put a block around it to determine the specific height or length, and then you can take this and implement it into your isometrical drawing. Then, any geometrical shape, pentagon, octagon, hexagon, you will need to do an auxiliary view first before you can take it into a isometrical drawing. Then, you are going to put a block around the auxiliary view and we do this to get dimensions. This is the main purpose of an auxiliary view. We are going to take those dimensions and implement it in a 30 degree view now, which is an isometrical, and then we can take that, let's say that is A, from there to there, we can implement that length in 30 degrees from there to there, A, and then there to there, which I'll label B, you can measure and you can put it there in an isometrical drawing as B. Now you have this hexagon in A, isometrical drawing so you need to go do some revision on your isometrical circles and you will need to do some revision on your geometrical shapes always have a look out for a starting position and remember that we draw an isometrical drawing at 30 degrees and 30 degrees have a look out for a cutting line because they can ask you to do a cut it isometrical drawing now let's look at question four which is your mechanical assembly and this question is going to count the most marks out of all the questions in your paper two. It is usually going to count about 90 marks to 95 marks. This question can be heavily overwhelming for a lot of students, and I understand that. But I want to encourage you to try and do this question as best as you can. Luckily, you have a lot of visual presentation of the mechanical assembly to help you. So let's look at this page. On this page, you're going to get the information regarding the mechanical assembly. On the right top corner, you're going to get the given information, you're going to get the instructions, and you're going to get some notes. Make sure that you take your time and you work through this and highlight everything that you find important. You are most likely going to draw two views. And remember, this is done in third orthographic projection. So if they ask for a front view and a right view, the right view should be on the right side. If they ask you for a front view and a left view, the left view will be on the left side. If they ask for a front and a top, the top view should be at the top. Then down here, you're going to get the part list of all the parts which are in the mechanical assembly. Over here on the left, you're going to get the explosion isometric drawing. This really puts everything into perspective when it comes to the assembly. So this will help you to identify 
and visualize where each part fits in. Then you'll get the orthographic views of each part. You can see there's part number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Just by looking at the orthographic views, we can see that this is going to be either a front and a right or a front and a left view. So if you go there, if we read through the instructions, it is a right view that you need to construct, that you need to draw, and a half sectional front view. So they are either going to ask you to do a full section or a half section. They can also ask you to draw a view in symmetry. Okay, so when you do something in symmetry, it is when it is exactly the same like a mirror effect on the other side and you will apply symmetry by using these two lines on the middle line you can only apply symmetry if they ask you to do it now let's look at the next page on the next page this is where you're going to do the drawing so for this instance they say you should do a right view and a half sectional front view so the right view you will draw here and the sectional front view you will draw on this side just to be aware of some penalties if you switch the two views let's say you put the right view on the left and the front view on the right you will get a penalty of minus two if you've used the incorrect scale you'll get a penalty of minus two you will need to go study the nuts and bolts calculations and construction methods it is guaranteed that you will need to draw a nut and a bolt in the mechanical assembly. So when you want to calculate the big circle of the nut, you're going to say M times 1,5. If you want to calculate the thread, you're going to say M times 0, 0,1. If you want to calculate the thickness of a nut, you're going to say M times 0, 0,8. If it is a three phase, you're going to go 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Where they meet, you'll draw the arc, the arc, and the arc. You'll use these points for your compass. You need to do a 30 degree chamfer line and a 30 degree chamfer line over there at 30 degrees. When you do a two-phase, it's going to be 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. You're going to draw the arcs in, but you do not chamfer off. You leave that corner as a dark and hot corner. A bolt head is M times 0, 0,7. And you will apply the same construction for the head, which you've applied with the nut to the bolt head to get the three faces or other two faces. So you will need to study the nut and the bolt information because you will need to do it. You can see that the bolts count 14 and the M60 nut counts four marks. So that accumulates a lot of marks just for the nuts and the bolts. When it comes to hatching, remember, we hatch at 45 degrees and each part should be hatched in a different direction. So two parts which are touching each other, let's say you have a part here and you have a part there, you can hatch this part 45 degrees in this direction and this one you'll hatch 45 degrees in this direction. Always read through the question to make sure if you should add hidden detail for this instance, no hidden detail is required. And don't forget to add in your center lines as they do count marks now how do you tackle this what is the best way to start with your question four i will usually start with the view where you can see the nut or the bolt's head so for this instance if this is the front view which is going to be a sectional view i would most likely start with the right view because you will need the right views information especially the nut to project that over to get the width of the nut in the front view. So you're most typically going to start 
with the view which is not in section because this is going to be easy it's just going to be a few parts you don't need to think um, that hard on this view because it's not a sectional view and there's no hidden detail that you need to add in so you're just going to draw everything that is visible from standing in this position looking at the mechanical assembly time management is crucial at this question as this question is going to take the longest to complete in this paper so you will need to pace yourself here on this question to make sure that you do not waste time on this question. You take it step by step, part by part, and you just build. Start with, if you do the sectional view first, I will most likely start with the shaft because the shaft is usually in the middle and you build around the shaft. So you'll put the shaft in, then you'll put the bush in, then you'll put a part in and you build and you build and you build. Don't get discouraged on this question. Take a deep breath, add a part, then another, and then another. And after 45 minutes to 50 minutes, you will have a lot of drawings. Okay? It is actually not that difficult to do because all that you do is you are taking an orthographic view and you are drawing it on scale on the paper. Just be aware, if you draw part 1, say there, part 2 there, part 3 there, part 4 here, part 5 there, and you do not assemble, you're going to get minus 1 for each part that you do not assemble. Okay, so this is something that you should not do. I know there's some people that teach you to do it like this. Okay, you're going to get a penalty of minus up to 10. Good. That is all from my side, guys. Good luck. Take a deep breath. And uh, I really do wish you all the best of luck with paper two. Please let me know what your experience was with paper two after you have written. And then also check out, I will be doing a draw out for paper two as well. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.